Steve here. Thank you so much for joining me. I thought I would take a couple minutes and just spend a little time with you talking about a couple of different things that I think are really important uh, in terms of bettering your guitar solos. Now, I'm not going to give you any licks or anything like that today, but what I am going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of different things to think about that can meet you exactly where you are in your playing. Maybe you're only doing pentatonic, maybe you're doing diatonic or modes or something like that. Hey, everybody, thanks for, for joining me. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to look at three things that I want you to think about. And if you do have your guitar available, you can certainly join me. Otherwise, you can watch it later as well. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for joining me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I call opposing ideas or contrasting ideas. OK, so whenever you grab the guitar and you're going to solo over something, if you feel like when you solo, everything kind of sounds the same. What we need to do is we need to try and break away from that. So if we think about opposing ideas, fast, slow, high, low, loud, soft, playing, not playing, right? Different things like that, pentatonic, diatonic, whatever the case may be. But always be aware that the more you change up your approach, the more it's going to make your solo sound a little more interesting. It doesn't always have to be just more knowledge. Sometimes it's, it's the way you put your fingers on the guitar and the sounds that you make. Hey, everybody. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I was going to play, and I'll just use uh, A minor as our example right now. So I go in here and I start doing this. Now it's all the same, right? So what I want to do is I want to change up the feel. I want to change up the tempo. I want to change up the sound a little bit. And I might even change up the way I'm approaching playing on my guitar. So when I go in here, You see, and I'm trying to give it a little more life by exploring some of the sounds that I can pull out of there. So it doesn't just have to be how fast I can play or the latest lick that I've learned or, um, you know, setting a metronome or playing along with a jam track or anything like that. Maybe what I need to do is is kind of free myself from some of those restraints and just explore what it sounds like, what it feels like. Right. <laughs> So explore those sounds. Now, again, I, I've got my amp set at a comfortable sound so I can change my volume a little bit. I can change my, my uh, pickup selector right to get some different sounds, which I love to do. I have a little reverb on there. I have a little delay on there. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. OK, so that's step one is is learning to think about contrast or differences, right? Opposing ideas. And you might even write those down. Like before you jam, you might write down different scales, right? Pentatonic versus diatonic, loud, soft, high, low, fast, slow, different things like that. Play, don't play. Like it's really important to every once in a while stop playing. It creates space like when people talk, right? If you're listening to a speaker and that speaker talks the whole time, there's never there's never a, a, a space to stop and create Suspense, right? So the second thing I want you to think about is connectivity on the fretboard, which is what I call escape routes. And basically what you're doing is, let's just use a simple example. Let's say I'm using the first and second positions of minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic. OK, so I've got this and I've got this. Now, of course, I know I can practice those with a metronome and I certainly should, right? I refer to that kind of practice as route practice, where you're doing it over and over and over to create automation and speed and clarity and all those things, which is really important. But what we're looking at right now is not that. So we're not worried about that. What we're looking for is intuition on the way that we move across the fretboard. Because if you think about it, if I was going to move between positions one and two on my guitar, the only two ways I can do that really is by actually shifting my fingers. <laughs> Right? Or using some method of sliding. And I could do either one. But what I want to be aware of is as I'm moving, and I don't have to just play the whole time. Sometimes what I need to do is play a little bit and then stop and figure out what the heck I just did. Right? So if I do something, and it might not be the most exciting thing or the best lick, but if I can figure out, The way I moved, 
and make that an automated element in my playing, it becomes part of the way I play. So I'm not just stuck in one position all the time going up and down, but I can use this route, this escape route, to move back and forth between various positions. And of course, the more positions I know, the more I can use those things in my playing. Okay, and again, I don't wanna do it the whole time. That's what opposition is about. The first thing that we talked about are contrast. <clears throat> so I wanna become aware that those things are available to me, but the only way I'm gonna do that is every once in a while when I grab my guitar and practice, I can't just practice route practice all the time. It can't be just speed picking or sweeps or you know, scales or whatever, and don't get me wrong, all of that stuff is really important, but I think what a lot of people, what a lot of guitar players don't spend enough time on is really becoming intuitive with their guitar, how things feel, how things sound. We're just always trying to play, right? And so it's really important to spend a little time trying to do that when you're playing. Um, so what I want you to do is work on that a little bit. Now, the third thing, which is really important and it feeds into the other two, are what I call human or vocal elements, which are hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, bends, and vibrato. Now, those elements are the things that really make the guitar come to life if we do them effectively, if we do them with confidence and we do them properly. So as I'm playing, if I, for instance, with escape routes, I'm already doing slides, right? And I could add in my vibrato however I like. right as I play. So when I get in here and I start doing things, I wanna sell, for lack of a better word, I don't mean financially, I mean, when somebody listens, they're hearing something that either sounds authentic or they're hearing something that sounds like you're practicing. And what we wanna do is we wanna give them something that sounds authentic. And we don't have to always try and play at 100%. Sometimes what we can do is just find something that sounds authentic and really use that so it doesn't have to be the fastest lick or you know the, that one thing that we are working on. It's fine if we use that. But to contrast that, all the rest of the time, what we need to be doing is trying to make something that sounds kind of like a voice, right? So I'm using bending, I'm using vibrato. As I play, I'm using all of these and I'm using those escape routes to get around. The guitar, right? And then I'm also using contrast. I'm always thinking about trying to play a little pentatonic or a little diatonic. Okay, and again, working my, my guitar tone a little bit. Somebody asked in there, I saw, I'm using the Hughes and Kettner amp right now. Um, but my big thing is, is I can go from real mellow and then add that in, right? So think about that a little bit when you're playing. Again, I don't want to waste your time, but just work with those three things a little bit. And of course, this video will be uh, available, you know, when you get off work or whatever it is that you're doing to watch again. But focus on those three things. Number one, opposing ideas, right? Dynamic contrast, if you will. Fast, slow, high, low loud, soft, you know, play, don't play, all of those kind of things, different scales. And then use, become more intuitive on the ways that you're moving around inside the positions that you're working on, okay? And it doesn't have to be the whole fretboard. Maybe you don't know the whole fretboard, right? Maybe you only know a couple of positions. Well, that's cool. Use those and just get comfortable with that. The nice thing about that, that route practice is that sometimes what it'll do is it'll bring some of the problem spots that you're having to the surface so you can go, oh, I guess I don't know that position as well as I thought I did. Or I never thought about moving on that finger before. Wow, I, now that makes sense to me because I'm aware of it. And then the third thing, which is, for me, is key, is hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, bending, and vibrato, is dialing in those techniques. And again, they don't have to be fast, but when you do them, do them with confidence because they're kind of what sell the, the melodic element of your soloing, right? Of your guitar playing. And I shouldn't just say soloing, because you can, 
use it just on a melody or something that you're playing as well. But anyway, so take care, everybody. Uh, have a wonderful, it's Thursday, so we're almost to the weekend. Have a wonderful weekend and stay positive and please leave comments and do me a favor. If you're liking what I'm doing, please, you know, spread the word and subscribe to the channel and let people know. I would sure appreciate that. So take care and I'll talk to you soon, okay?